Dude, they killed 10% of the population of Earth while he was alive. They had a lot of things going for them. They had strategy, first of all. Mm. They, they had devious, wild strategies. They killed so what? many people that they affected the carbon footprint of human beings on Earth. Driving towards Ordos City in Inner Mongolia, China, you're bound to notice the striking mausoleum of Genghis Khan. Rebuilt in the 1950s to honor the legendary Mongol leader, this traditional Mongol-style complex is a focal point for those who wish to pay their respects to a man whose empire once spanned from the Pacific Ocean to Eastern Europe. Yet, intriguingly, the mausoleum doesn't actually hold Genghis Khan's remains. It's a cenotaph, a monument to someone whose final resting place lies elsewhere. This fact alone adds an air of mystery to the figure of Genghis Khan, a ruler of immense power and reach, yet whose burial site remains a secret to this day. There's like a considerable decrease in the carbon layer on Earth when Genghis Khan was alive. Genghis Khan, born Temujin, came from humble beginnings near the sacred mountain of Burhan Khaldun in what is now Mongolia. His early years were marked by poverty and danger, but these hardships shaped him into the formidable leader he would become. Burkhan Khaldun wasn't just a mountain to him, it was a sanctuary, a place to connect with the sky god Tengri and a hunting ground that provided refuge and solace. It's said that during one of his hunting trips he found such beauty in the view that he wished to be buried there upon his death. The end of Genghis Khan's life came in the summer of 1227, somewhere along the Upper Yellow River. Even in his late 60s, Khan was actively expanding his empire, subduing the Tangut Kingdom. Details about his death are scarce and shrouded in mystery largely due to the Mongolian taboo surrounding illness and death. The secret history of the Mongols, our primary source for his life, is notably silent on the specifics of his passing, leaving us with more questions than answers. Genghis Khan's desire for a humble and unmarked grave, as per his wishes, speaks volumes about his character. Despite his vast empire and unmatched power, he sought simplicity in death, echoing his roots and the itinerant lifestyle of his youth. Let my body die, but let my nation live, he reportedly said, underscoring his vision for Mongolia's enduring legacy over his own memorialization. This blend of humility and mystery makes the story of Genghis Khan's final resting place all the more captivating a testament to a life that, while immensely documented, still holds secrets yet to be uncovered. What's crazy is that that was like one of the superpowers of the world that everyone was terrified of, the Mongol Empire. Mm. The mystery surrounding the death of Genghis Khan is as vast and varied as the empire he once ruled. Over the years, tales about his demise have ranged from the believable to the downright bizarre. An early European emissary to the Mongols once claimed that the Great Khan was struck down by lightning, on the other hand, the famed traveler Marco Polo recounted that an arrow wound to the knee was the cause of Genghis Khan's death. There are darker tales too, suggesting he was poisoned, fell victim to a magic spell from the Tangut King, or met a particularly grim end at the hands of the Tangut Queen. Despite these colorful stories, the preparation for his burial was reportedly far less sensational. Genghis Khan's wife, Yesui, is said to have dressed him in a simple white robe felt boots and a hat, wrapping his body in a white felt blanket scented with sandalwood and bound with golden straps. The funeral procession that carried him back to Mongolia was marked by a riderless horse bearing his empty saddle, symbolizing the loss of the leader. Yet some versions of the story take a darker turn, detailing how the soldiers accompanying his body on the 40-day journey back to Mongolia left a trail of death in their wake killing every living being they encountered to protect the secret of the grave's location. It's even said that once Genghis Khan was buried in his unmarked grave, a thousand horsemen rode over the site to obscure it further, after which those horsemen and then the soldiers who killed them were also killed in a chilling sequence of events aimed at ensuring the grave's secrecy. Sound evidence that Genghis Khan's DNA is present in about 16 million men alive today. Among the more poignant tales is the one involving a baby camel buried with the Khan, so its mother would forever mark the location of his grave, ensuring that Genghis Khan's family could always find him. Another story draws parallels with ancient burials, suggesting that a river was diverted to cover his grave, echoing the burials of historical figures like the Sumerian king Gilgamesh and the Visigothic king Alaric. The truth about how Genghis Khan died may forever be shrouded in mystery, 
with each story adding to the legend of a figure who, even in death, continues to captivate and intrigue. Yet amidst the swirl of claims and counterclaims, there's one intriguing piece of evidence that stands out. The Great Taboo, or Ich Korig. Following Genghis Khan's death, an expansive area around Burkhan Khaldun covering about 93 square miles was declared strictly off-limits, with death as the penalty for trespassers, barring the Khan's family needing to bury another relative. This sacred prohibition could be seen as a diversion, a centuries-old feint to protect the true location of his grave. Entrusted to the Dark Had tribe, exempt from taxes and military duty in return for their silence, this taboo was fiercely protected until Mongolia's transition to a People's Republic in 1924. For centuries, this region remained untouched, a pristine snapshot of the 13th century, undisturbed by human activity, save for the trails left by wild animals. Even the communists, wary of igniting Mongolian nationalism, labelled it a highly restricted area, wrapping it in military secrecy, air bases and artillery ranges. Interestingly, Stalin's obsession with finding Genghis Khan's grave, part of his broader fascination with Asia's great conquerors, led to several unsuccessful expeditions to Burkhan Khaldun went on to form this empire that to this day is one of the most frightening forces in the history of humanity. It's said that when Timur's tomb was opened by the Soviets, a curse was unleashed, marking the beginning of the Nazi invasion of the Soviet Union. Only after Timur's reburial did the Soviets see a turn in their fortunes at Stalingrad, suggesting perhaps a stroke of luck in not locating Genghis Khan's grave. With the end of communism in Mongolia in the late 1980s, restrictions on the highly restricted area eased, drawing foreign archaeologists eager to solve the mystery of Genghis Khan's missing grave. In the early 90s, a Mongolian-Japanese team employing ultrasound technology uncovered over 1,300 burial sites of Mongol nobility in the region, a testament to the enduring fascination and respect for the Khan's legacy. The quest to find Genghis Khan's final resting place continues to captivate the world, a puzzle waiting to be solved in the vast, untouched landscapes of Mongolia. The quest to uncover the final resting place of Genghis Khan has led many to speculate that he might be buried near the lofty peaks of Burkhan Khaldun. Yet, the idea of actually digging into the sacred soil to find out seems unthinkable to many Mongolians. The notion of disturbing their national hero's peace is, to put it mildly, deeply unpopular. In a twist of fate, the protection of this revered site has shifted from the hands of tribal guardians and communist enforcers to an international safeguarding body. The area around Burkhan Khaldun has been embraced by a new guardian, UNESCO. Recognized as a World Heritage Site, the Sacred Mountain and its vast untouched environs now fall under the designation of the Burkhan Khaldun Sacred Mountain and the surrounding Khan Kenti strictly protected area, spanning an impressive 4,740 square miles. This designation ensures that the mountain, sacred to so many, is preserved from undue human impact. Only worship rituals are permitted on Burkhan Khaldun itself, with all other activities traditionally barred. Finding detailed information about Khan Kenti or even a map of the protected area can be surprisingly challenging. The UNESCO website offers one of the few glimpses into the region, hinting at a deliberate effort to keep this area under wraps. It seems as though there's a collective will, perhaps even echoing the wishes of Genghis Khan himself, to keep the sanctity of this place intact, shrouded in mystery and respect. This approach not only honors the legacy of Mongolia's greatest hero, but also resonates with those who believe that some secrets, some mysteries, are indeed better left untouched and unsolved.